Good morning. It's Wednesday, July 22nd, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. A devotion today is entitled, Don't Raise a Fist, in our scripture, Psalm 75. I warned the proud, stop your boasting. I told the wicked, don't raise your fists. Don't raise your fists in defiance at the heavens or speak with such arrogance. For no one on earth, from east or west or even from the wilderness, should raise a defiant fist. It is God alone who judges. He decides who will rise and who will fall. For the Lord holds a cup in his hand that is full of foaming wine mixed with spices. He pours out the wine in judgment, and all the wicked must drink it, draining it to the dregs. But as for me, I will always proclaim what God has done. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. For God says, I will break the strength of the wicked, but I will increase the power of the godly. Like most people, I laugh at goofy things I do, or those that other people do. Humor is generally spontaneous and understandable. We laugh when we get tickled. One of the components of humor is absurdity. When, for instance, you've told a two-year-old she cannot grab that snarling dog by the nose, and she whirls around to lock eyes with yours, and her icy glare screams, I hate you, and if you don't let me pet that puppy now, I'm going to wring your neck, you pompous idiot. Well, you just got to laugh. It's absurd that a two-year-old who's barely 30 inches tall and weighing in at a massive 30 pounds and not understanding the least bit of danger of wanting something best left alone is going to wring the neck of a six-foot, 200-pound father. And if you're not somehow tickled by that absurdity, you'd better check your pulse. It's humorous, but reasonably harmless to see the immature actions of a two-year-old. But with adults, not so much. Adults of any age operating with an immature, short fuse and the power to lift a dangerous fist in anger is not funny at all. We have a lot of that in our culture. Frankly, it's in our nature. And who's to say definitively exactly why it seems worse these days? Perhaps it's the relatively new platform that social media or news media have given that entices and empowers the attention grabbers towards outrageous acting out, capitalizing on a perceived injustice, or maybe it's just a grab for attention. In the end, it's still a two-year-old who hasn't got a clue but is going to demand his way. The folly in it all and the tragedy that follows is, in getting our way, Will we be better off? The current movement which clamors for an end to racism is a fact in point here. An end to racism is a lovely thought and one of which God heartily approves. After all, God's hand created Adam and Eve with the DNA chain that held the key to every form of diversity we now see in the human race. To disparage one of God's own, or any who are disparate from our tribe, is to denigrate the Creator. After all, we all hail back to the same set of parents in the garden. The problem with the movement du jour is not the rallying point of an end to racism, but rather with the methodology. To use anger, the raised fist, either metaphorically or physically or verbally, against others and their motives will not remove racism. Rather, it further divides those who are already different. It puts those who push the anger on the same level as, say, Adolf Hitler, a monster with a heinous quest. His quest was to push racism to its ugliest, purest conclusion put all the other tribes to death, and then we'll have a perfect society. Adolf Hitler was just another two-year-old with a distorted sense of his own grandeur. Granted, Black Lives Matter and its push for an end to racism have a rightful support in their endgame from any fair-minded individual. But unless the fist is laid down to open the hands to take my hand and others, even the perceived enemy, They stand as just another two-year-old stamping his feet, pushing any hope of reconciliation down the drain. 
And considering the imagery God uses in today's psalm, the dregs of what's down that drain will be a pretty rough drink to swallow when they get there. Let's pray together. Father, forgive us our foolish ways of trying to correct violence done with more violence given. For you today, sometimes it seems like the more sophisticated and educated we get, the dumber we become. God hates violence of all kinds. How many ways does he have to say that? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road today. Have a blessed day.